Newton. Newton. Newton was denied seeing gyroscopic action simply because there were no bearings, no shafts, and no machined discs that would be even in balance. So he never saw a gyroscope. Now, he, nothing in his writings that I've read a couple of his books, Principia, whatever the heck he calls them, and there is nothing in there about gyroscopic action. And there's barely anything about spin. There's almost nothing about spin. Now, yet Newton came up with all kinds of stuff without knowing those crucial uh, elements, because that's, you know, electrons spin, everything spins, the planets spin, and they form spirals and they join each other by spinning and converging, uh, uh, diverging in a spiral or converging in a spiral. And there's entropy, and there's positive entry and negative entry, depending on which way the spiral is going. Is it going in diversion or is it convergent? And you got all these things about spirals, and everybody sees planets forming a solar system by spiraling, in, or a galaxy is formed by everything spiraling. A whole galaxy is really a, basically a flat plane, and our solar system is a flat plane with a bunch of spinning you know, objects that just go around and around. And now they're precessing. I mean, they don't go around the sun for no reason. That's a precessional motion. A gyro is bending, and so it's precessional. But then there is a spiral that the whole solar system is following. Then that's capped off. And capping that induces that spin of the, the actual travel of the planets. It induces that into spin of the planets. So that's induced by capping the spiral that the planets are in as they go around the sun. Now, Newton never saw any of that. Even Einstein never particularly looked at that. I think somewhere during his time, Einstein did start to get into spin as being something really worth looking at. You take a look at this Mark Seifert's book and this guy Swanson, Claude Swanson. They're just saying that there's secrets, hidden secrets in gyroscopic action that if we get to understand, we're going to learn the, the much more in depth about physics. So Newton never had that. Einstein never really had that. And it's fundamental mechanics, just plain fundamental mechanics of orbits, translations of orbits, bending the spin plane of the orbit, and then powering that precession that comes from bending the spin plane. So you got four, that, that, the last one being spirals. That's how you get the spiral. Because you power the precession. You get two things off of that. You get natural precession that the gyro just makes happen. And boy, it knows how to sense gravity. It'll stay against gravity. I mean, how does it know to stay against gravity? Then you add something to it, then it'll work that in and keep that into in, in a stable uh, precessional motion. I mean, how does it know to do that? How does it even know to, to uh, take an orbit and make it into something that will move 90 degrees to changing that spin plane of the orbit? And then all the properties that can come from that, planets finding each other, electrons finding a proton, spinning around, staying in an orbit, and then oscillating, and changing your DNA by oscillations that re-encode DNA. And that comes from oscillations. A guy from Sundin, uh, you know, he just said that in Russia, he's a really very, very sharp guy, a uh, renowned physicist, you know, followed by the TV cameras and all. But he and I spent a fair amount of time because we really clicked. And he said oscillations are the hidden secret of physics. Nobody's really gotten into them. And they just didn't make this move through gyroscopics, which gyroscopics leads to oscillations. Nobody's gotten even to the point of powering a precession, much less oscillations from gyroscopics. Now, I, that statement is just now starting to go away because people are starting to get into it. I mean, we're really, I think, at the beginning of the opening up of gyroscopic physics, which some universities should just be founded for that purpose alone, gyroscopic physics.